in our study of the gospel according to John. We will examine John chapter 3 from verse 1 to 7. Now there was a man of the Pharisees named Nicodemus, a leader of the Jews. He came to Jesus at night and said, Rabbi, we know that you are a teacher who has come from God, for no one could perform the signs you are doing if God were not with him. Jesus replied, Truly, truly, I tell you, no one can see the kingdom of God unless he is born again. How can a man be born when he is old? Nicodemus asked. Can he enter his mother's womb a second time to be born? Jesus answered, Truly, truly, I tell you, no one can enter the kingdom of God unless he is born of water and the spirit. Flesh is born of flesh, but spirit is born of the spirit. Do not be amazed that I said you must be born again. That I might know him and the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his suffering that I might attain unto the resurrection of the dead that I might apprehend that which I've been apprehended for. The meeting between Nicodemus, a leader of the Jews, and Jesus Christ at night appears to mark the first of many teaching discourses of Jesus as recorded by John. The content of this discussion and the setting reveals a deeper understanding of the work of Christ and the person of Jesus. Nicodemus was a leader of the Jews and he belonged to the Pharisaical order. The Pharisees were one of the leading Jewish religious orders of the day. They practiced and observed strict observance of the Jewish written and ceremonial laws. Nicodemus had witnessed the signs of the clearing of the temple and the healing of the lame and the blind. As an expert in Jewish law, customs, and the prophets, he had an understanding of the purpose of the signs, which was to validate Jesus' authority as the Messiah, the Son of God. However, the majority of his colleagues, the Pharisee sect, were in mortal opposition to Jesus and even planned his death. But Nicodemus, wanting to understand more about the person and the work of Jesus, came at night to have an audience with him. In coming by night, this may represent a fear of being spotted or seen by others. But symbolically, Nicodemus coming to Jesus by night represents a person living in the darkness of this world who now encounters the light. Jesus is the light that shines in the darkness. John 8 verse 12, once again, Jesus spoke to the people and said, I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will never walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. David speaks of Jesus in Psalms chapter 36 verse 9. For with you is the fountain of life. In your light we see light. Remember that in John chapter 1 from verse 4 to 5, it says, In him was life. And that light was the light of men. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. So Nicodemus says to Jesus, Rabbi, we know that you are a teacher who has come from God. For no one could perform the signs you are doing if God were not with him. Nicodemus understood that God authenticates his messengers through giving them power to perform miracles. 
but this understanding falls far short of Jesus' true identity. It appears that Nicodemus may be approaching Jesus as a delegate of the Sanhedrin. The Sanhedrin was the supreme council and tribunal of the Jews headed by a high priest. They exercised authority over religious, civil, and criminal matters among the Jewish people. So he said to Jesus, we know as though representing a group, yet also coming for personal inquiry. But here is what Jesus replies Nicodemus, truly, truly, or most assuredly, I tell you, no one can see the kingdom of God unless he is born again. Yeah, Jesus, in revealing the grand design of the work of God, tells Nicodemus, who is symbolic of the world of sin, a people living in self-righteousness, a people with a grand picture of themselves as being morally superior, as being good men, being virtuous individuals. Today, almost every person self purports to be a good person, to be kind, to be loving, to show empathy and understanding. But yeah, Jesus, the Messiah, is saying that spiritual rebirth is an absolute necessity for entering the kingdom of God. The word unless in the teaching of Jesus refers to a universally necessary condition for seeing and entering the kingdom of God. To be born again, to undergo spiritual rebirth is an essential part of Christianity. Without it, entrance into God's kingdom is impossible. To be born again or spiritual rebirth is also called regeneration. Any group that claims to be a Christian group or claims to believe in Jesus for salvation but scorns and disdains the concept of being born again such as the murder harlot or other false sects, false cults, and false churches represent apostasy, a renunciation of the faith. Regeneration refers to a new generating, a new genesis, a new beginning. It is more than turning over a new leaf. It marks the beginning of a new life in a radically new person. The Apostle Peter in 1 Peter chapter 1 verse 23 speaks of believers having been born again, not of corruptible seed, but incorruptible through the word of God, which lives and abides forever. Regeneration is the work of the Holy Spirit on those who are spiritually dead. In Ephesians chapter 2 from verse 2 to 10, and you were dead in your sins and trespasses in which you used to walk when you conformed to the ways of this world and of the ruler of the power of the air, the spirit who is now at work in the sons of disobedience. All of us also lived among them at one time, fulfilling the cravings of our flesh and indulging its desires and thoughts. Like the rest, we were by nature children of wrath, but because of his great love for us, God, who is rich in mercy, made us alive with Christ, even when we were dead in our trespasses. It is by grace you have been saved. And God raised us up with Christ and seated us with him in the heavenly realms in Christ Jesus, in order that in the coming ages he might display the surpassing riches of his grace, demonstrated by his kindness to us in Christ Jesus. For it is by grace you have been saved, through faith, and this not from yourselves. It is the gift of God, not by works, so that no one can boast. For we are God's workmanship, created in Christ Jesus, to do good works, which God prepared in advance as a way of life. So the Holy Spirit recreates the human spirit, quickening it from spiritual death to spiritual life, 
regenerate people and new creations, where formerly they had no disposition, no inclination or desire for the things of God, now they are disposed and inclined toward God. In regeneration, God plants a desire for himself in the human heart that otherwise would not be there. Regeneration is not to be confused with the full experience of conversion. Just as natural birth is our introduction into life outside the womb, likewise our spiritual rebirth is the starting point of spiritual life. The Apostle Paul touches on this when speaking on gaining Christ, knowing him above all else, in Philippians 3 verse 7 to 10. But whatever was gained to me, I count as loss for the sake of Christ. More than that, I count all things as loss compared to the surpassing excellence of knowing Christ Jesus, my Lord, for whom I have lost all things. I consider them rubbish that I may gain Christ and be found in him, not having my own righteousness from the law, but that which is true faith in Christ. Faith in Christ, the righteousness from God on the basis of faith. I want to know Christ and the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his sufferings, being conformed to him in his death, and so somehow to attain the resurrection from the dead. Regeneration occurs by God's divine initiative and is an act that is sovereign, immediate, and instantaneous. An awareness of our conversion may be gradual, but regeneration itself is instantaneous. No one can be partially reborn any more than a woman can be partially pregnant. By this, we mean that regeneration is not the fruit or result of faith. Rather, regeneration precedes faith as the necessary condition for faith. We also do not in any way avail ourselves towards regeneration or cooperate as co-workers with the Holy Spirit to bring it to pass. We do not decide or choose to be regenerated. God chooses to regenerate us before we will ever choose to embrace him before we come to saving faith. Indeed, we can never come to saving faith except we have first been regenerated by God the Holy Spirit. In 1 John chapter 4, verse 10, And this is love, not that we loved God, but that he loved us and sent his Son as an atoning sacrifice for our sins. Also in 1 John chapter 4, verse 19, We love because he first loved us. In regeneration, we see the love of God to the believers by his sovereign election for his glory. Now we clearly understand that indeed in John 6 verse 44, no one can come to me unless the Father who sent me draws him and I will raise him up at the last day. We did not choose God. God chose us. We did not love God. God loved us. So we worship him because he chose us and he loved us even when we were dead in our sins, but now we are alive. The Lord says in Jeremiah chapter 31 verse 3, I have loved you with an everlasting love. Therefore, with loving kindness, I have drawn you. After we have been regenerated by the sovereign grace of God, for sure we do choose, act, cooperate, and believe in Christ. What God does is to quicken us to spiritual life, rescuing us from darkness, bondage, and spiritual death. God makes faith possible and actual for us. He quickens faith within us. Ephesians chapter 1 verse 4 to 6, For he chose us in him before the foundation of the world to be holy, and blameless in his presence. In love, he predestined us for adoption as his sons through Jesus Christ, according to the good pleasure of his will, 
to the praise of his glorious grace by which he made us accepted in the beloved. You cannot enter God's kingdom by being a self-proclaimed good person, by being kind, by being a civil rights leader, by being an environmentalist, or by being a philanthropist. The only way to see or to enter the kingdom of God is to be born again. Flesh is born of flesh, but spirit is born of the Holy Spirit. So Jesus says, do not be amazed that I said you must be born again. These are wonderful words. So saying them over again to me, wonderful words of life, let me more of their beauty see, wonderful words of life, words of life and beauty, teach me faith and duty, beautiful words, wonderful words, wonderful words of life. And the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his suffering being conformed unto his death that I might apprehend that which I've been apprehended for that I might apprehend that which I've been apprehended for being conformed unto his death that I might apprehend that which I've been apprehended for Apprehend